So today, we will be learning about the preamble. But not just any ordinary preamble per se, we will learn about the preamble of the Indian Constitution. But before we get into the nitty gritties, let's know what the term preamble represents. The preamble to a constitution is an introductory statement that outlines the document's philosophy. It embodies the fundamental values and principles on which the constitution is based upon. It includes the aims and objectives which the founding fathers of the constitution enjoined the polity to strive to achieve. Given the fact that the Indian constitution is the longest written constitution of the world, reading the preamble in isolation will give us a concise idea of India's constitution. In nutshell, the preamble closely mirrors the constitution. What Nani Palkiwala said, preamble is the identity card of the constitution. The constitution of India begins with the preamble, yet it was taken up for discussion only after the debates for the constitution ended. This was because the makers of the constitution wanted to ensure that the preamble was in conformity with the constitution as adopted by the constituent assembly. Preamble is based on the Objectives Resolution, which was moved by Pandit Nehru on 13 December 1946 and unanimously adopted on 22nd January 1947. The members of the Constituent Assembly extensively deliberated upon a range of issues, including fundamental rights, remedies against invasion of fundamental rights, supremacy of the constitution, role of judiciary in the constitutional scheme, emergency provisions, and the inclusion of God in the preamble. The resolution read, this constituent assembly declares its firm and solemn resolve to proclaim India as an independent sovereign republic and to draw up for her future governance a constitution wherein all power and authority of the sovereign independent India, its constituent parts and organs of the government are derived from the people and wherein shall be guaranteed and secured to all the people of India justice, social, economic and political, equality of status, of opportunity and before the law, freedom of thought, expression, belief, faith and worship, vocation, association and action subject to law and public morality and wherein adequate safeguards shall be provided for minorities backward and tribal areas and depressed and other backward classes and wherein shall be maintained the integrity of the territory of the republic and its sovereign rights on land sea and air according to justice and the law of civilized nations and this ancient land attains rightful and honored place in the world and make its full and willing contribution to the promotion of world peace and welfare of mankind. After deliberating on a range of issues, the drafting committee made two minor changes to the resolution and incorporated it in the preamble. The committee adopted the expression sovereign democratic republic instead of sovereign independent republic as it considered independence to be implied in the word sovereign. The committee also introduced a clause on fraternity to emphasize the need for fraternal concord and goodwill. Several parallels have been drawn between the objectives resolution and the preamble to the extent that the former has been termed as the spiritual preamble to the constitution. The members of the Constituent Assembly accorded such high respect to the resolution because it envisaged a future pledge for the realization of constitutional values and aspirations. To this extent, Jawaharlal Nehru once said, and I quote, laws are made of words, but this resolution is something higher than the law. It's a declaration. It's a firm resolve. It's a pledge, an undertaking 
and it is for all of us a hope, a dedication. I would beg of this house to consider this resolution in the mighty prospect of our past, of the turmoil of the present, and of the great and unborn future that is going to take place soon. On 24 January 1950, out of 299 members, about 284 members of the Constituent Assembly appended their signature to the Constitution. They signed two handwritten copies of the document, one each in Hindi and English. Our Constitution was neither typed nor printed. Prime Minister Nehru was the first among the signatories. Moreover, 46 of the signatories had signed in Hindi, including the President, Dr. Rajendra Prasad. Among the signatories were also 15 women who contributed in drafting the Constitution. On account of being the President of the Constituent Assembly, Dr. Rajendra Prasad's signature was assigned the topmost place. Thereafter, in 1976, the words socialist, secular, and integrity were added to the preamble through the 42nd Amendment Act, 1976. All these events played a part in the formation of the preamble. As of today, the original copies of the Constitution are kept in the helium-filled cases in the library of the Indian Parliament. The preamble of Indian Constitution is not just a symbolic statement, but is so much more. It has an educational purpose, an explanatory purpose, a legal purpose, and a symbolic purpose. Let's examine all these in detail. The preamble basically gives idea of the following things or objects. Number one, source of the constitution, nature of the Indian state, statement of its objectives, and date of its adoption. The preamble serves an explanatory purpose. It answers certain fundamental questions such as, who is the author of this document? What is the nature of Indian polity? What are the goals and objectives to be achieved by the Indian polity? Answering the first question, the phrase in our constituent assembly, do hereby adopt, enact, and give to ourselves this constitution, makes it amply clear that the responsibility of drafting the Indian constitution, including the preamble, rests with the Constituent Assembly. And this power is exercised by the people of India through their representatives in the Constituent Assembly. On this subject, Dr. Ambedkar even went on to say, the preamble embodies that this constitution has its root, its authority, its sovereignty from the people. On this note, it is surprising to know that there were recommendations that suggested starting the constitution in the name of God or Mahatma Gandhi or a combination of both. But these were all negated on the grounds that the constitution was not a Gandhian constitution and the preamble promised liberty of belief, faith and worship. The text and the tone of the preamble makes us acutely aware that the Constituent Assembly was merely a representative of the people. What is the nature of the Indian state? Sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic, republic. Preamble also specifies the date on which our constitution was adopted. 26 November 1949, but it was enforced on 26 January 1950. Want to know the reason? Let me take you back to 1929. 26 January 1950 was the day Indian constitution came into effect and the country became a republic. The date 26 January was chosen for a particular reason as it marked a key event in the struggle for India's freedom from British rule. Why was 26 January chosen to be India's Republic Day? In 1929, Lahore hosted the Indian National Congress session in which Jawaharlal Nehru was president. At the time, Pandit Nehru and Subhash Chandra Bose were together working to oppose those in the Congress party 
who were satisfied with the dominion status, wherein the British monarch would continue to be the head of the government. On December 31, 1929, Pandit Nehru hoisted the tricolor on the banks of the river Ravi and demanded Purna Swaraj or complete independence. And the date set for independence was January 26, 1930. The day was then celebrated as Purna Swaraj Day for the next 17 years. On January 26, 1930, the Congress passed the Purna Swaraj Resolution or the Declaration of Independence. When India became independent in 1947, the date set by the British was August 15. This date was chosen to coincide with the second anniversary of the day when Japanese forces submitted to Allied powers after the Second World War. The historian Ramachandra Guha notes, freedom finally came on a day that resonated with the imperial pride rather than the nationalist sentiment. Thus, when the Constitution of India was adopted on 26 November 1949, many considered it necessary to celebrate the document on a day associated with national pride. The Purna Swaraj Day was the best option, January 26. It has since been celebrated as the country's Republic Day. Answering the last question, the preamble includes a set of promises that it wishes to grant to all citizens equality, liberty, justice, and fraternity.